Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another great example of an entry exam problem, specifically for JE Advanced in Mechanics, and they're giving us two spheres, A and B, that have the same radius R, and they have different densities. Density as a function of R is KR over, that would be of course the variable R over R, which is the radius of the sphere, and the density of B is equal to K times the fraction R over big R to the fifth power. K is just a constant. So they tell us that if we then calculate the moment of inertia of these two spheres, that the ratio of IB over IA is N over 10, and N needs to be found. So N is going to be an integer from 1 to 9. So what is the strategy? Well, I already started an example here that we're going to try to calculate the moment of inertia and it's going to require integration. Also, we need a relationship between the mass and the density because after all, the let's write some of the main equations down, the moment of inertia of a point object is going to be mr squared and we can see here that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume, which means that the mass is equal to density times volume. So somehow we have to find the mass of each individual shell inside the sphere and then use that to calculate the moment of inertia of each shell and then integrate it over all the shells. So that's the strategy. The strategy is to have a relationship between mass and density and then we need to find, then we need to plug that in here and find the di. What is the di? So essentially what we can say is we're going to integrate, so we're going to start with um, a first, so the moment of inertia of a is going to be equal to the integral of all the dm's times r squared. Essentially we're going to sum up all the masses of all the little rings as we go from the inside to the outside. So we need to come up with an explanation or an equation for dm. And so m is density times volume. So dm, the small amount of mass of one of those little rings, dm, is going to be equal to the density at that particular location, which is going to be k times r over big R. So that's the density of a times the volume of that little ring, which is going to be the surface area times the thickness which is 4 pi r squared. That's going to be the surface area of a shell times the thickness dr. And if we then multiply that out, we can see that dm is equal to 4 pi k, 4 pi k over r as the constant, and then we have r cubed times dr. So that's our dm that's going to go in our integration. If we do the same thing for B, because we have to do it again for B, then dm is going to be equal to the density, which in that case is going to be k r to the fifth over r to the fifth times the volume, the dv, which is going to be 4 pi r squared times dr. And so that dm, this is for b, this is the dm for a, so that we make sure we separate those two. The dm for b is going to be equal to 4 pi k over r to the fifth times r to the fifth times r squared, which is r to the seventh times dr. So that's our dm. Now, are we ready to go ahead and plug that into our equation and of course it's not going to be r squared it's going to be little r squared because we're going to integrate from the inside to the outside so we have to have the integral of for the moment of inertia is the all the dms times r squared and now we're going to plug in for a we're going to plug in this dm and for b we're going to plug in this dm so i a equals when plug in the dm, we get the 4 pi k over r, 4 pi k over r times the integral of r squared times r cubed dr, which is r to the fifth dr, integrating from 0 to r. 
So that'll give us the moment of inertia of A. So this is going to be equal to 4 pi k over r times r to the 6th over 6, and that's from 0 to r. So this is going to be equal to 4 sixths. Um, well, we'll leave it as 4 sixths. 4 sixths pi k over r times r to the 6th. r to the 6th. And then this r will cancel out one of those r's, so it's going to be 4 sixths pi k r to the 5th. And that's the moment of inertia of A. Now we need to do the same thing for B. So I for B is going to be equal to, now of course again, we take the dm, which is this, and multiply it times the r squared. So the dm is 4 pi k over r fifth, 4 pi k over r to the fifth, times the integral of r squared times r to the seventh, which is r to the ninth dr from zero to r. Now we can integrate that, and so that becomes equal to 4 pi k over r to the fifth times r to the tenth divided by 10, and that's a terrible looking r. There we go. And that's going to be evaluated from zero to r. So that's going to be equal to 4 tenths pi k over r to the fifth times r to the tenth and of course r to the tenth divided by r to the fifth is r to the fifth so this is equal to 4 pi k r to the fifth divided by 10 and so this here is i sub b now we're ready to find the ratio because that's what they're looking for so we can say that i b over i a is equal to this one right here, which is 4 pi k r to the fifth over 10 divided by uh, i a, which is 4 pi k r to the fifth divided by 6. And that has to equal n over 10. All right, so that means that these cancel out. 1 and 1, and so we end up with 6 over 10 equals n over 10, so therefore n is equal to 6. And so there you go, you have to do those two quick integrations. You first have to realize the relationship between the moment of inertia and mr squared, and the mass is equal to the density times volume, so a small mass element inside your sphere is going to be kr over r, or k r to the fifth over r to the fifth times r cubed dr times, in this case, r to the seventh dr. And so that is how you then plug those into your integrals and you find the ratio of the moment of inertias. Okay, I know you have to do this in a very few minutes, but that's about as fast as you can do it unless you begin to realize that once you see these relationships, 4 over 6 and 4 over 10, then you then take IB over IA, so it's going to be 4 tenth divided by 4 6, the ratio is 6 over 10, which is N over 10, and therefore N equals 6. So sometimes you can kind of see it and go, ah, I see the relationship, 4 over 6, and 4 over 10, I divide this by this, I get 6 over 10, which is N over 10, and therefore N equals 6. So that's kind of the way you want to look at it. How long did I take? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, and I think they have about three or so minutes to do this. All right.